Clemson will get a chance to flush this painful Georgia uh, defeat uh, this Saturday when App State from the Sun Belt comes to Death Valley. It's an 8 o'clock game on the ACC Network. Want to do a quick preview of that and mostly spend time on what I'm hoping to see from Clemson, like what specifics I'm looking at that really need to improve after the poor showing against, against Georgia. To set that up real quick, just a few thoughts on Georgia. Uh, and I do have a recap video, so if you want to dive deeper, uh, go to the YouTube channel. Be sure you're subscribed uh, and check that video out. But just real quick, um, I thought we saw the Clemson offensive line take a big step forward. I think that's really encouraging. Uh, you know, we thought, I thought most people agreed. The Matt Luke hire was a great move. Uh, was when they, when Robbie Caldwell left, you wanted a hire like that. They didn't make it. it. Seemed like an obvious mistake at the time. In hindsight, very obvious mistake. And it's not just a hindsight 2020 thing. At the time, it was a mistake. Now they moved to an elite offensive line coach, and immediately you're seeing these dividends. Really impressed with that. I, I wasn't sure how long it would take. Uh, Marcus Tate got hurt. Luckily, he was back. Um, overall, I thought the offensive line played a good game. Uh, were they perfect? No. I know that Colin Sadler missed a big, big block on a on a club nick end zone uh, red zone run. Uh, I think that was probably when Tate was out. Uh, so that hurts. But generally speaking, I thought I thought that line was good. Um, the reason that the offense uh, is still pretty bad, or at least looked bad in that game, was because of quarterback and wide receiver play. Uh, so I want to point you to um, if you just search Aaron Murray, Cade Klubnik on YouTube. He, I was really impressed with this breakdown. It's like a 20 minute film breakdown. Uh, I mentioned it in another video. So I mentioned it again here. Just you can just search it. Uh, you'll find it right away. Uh, he called he he criticized Klubnik's footwork. Uh, called him a jumpy jelly bean, a jumping jelly bean, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. But the breakdown was great in the way he showed that he wasn't really rushed and he starts bouncing around and runs out of the pocket and he, you know, likely can make a completion if he doesn't do that. Instead he has to throw it away. Uh, so having calmer feet, that's something that fans notice too. Um, that's kind of when you know it's bad. Um, so that was one thing, but the bigger deal was there were several open deep shots that he took and he missed them because he threw it short. The most notable one I think was the Adam Randall play where he threw it short to Randall. Randall like didn't really do a whole lot to get it. And so they called pass interference, and then they looked at the replay and said, actually, or I don't know if they looked at the replay. I think they discussed. But then they said, no, it actually wasn't. I think it was probably the correct call because Randall didn't fight for it. That's the perfect example of, you know, quarterback puts a better ball out there, three, four, five yards further, that's a touchdown. If Randall's more aggressive and in, in fighting for it, it's at least a pass interference, right? So it's a failure on both ends. Uh, they got to make – the receivers got to win some 50 50 balls like that where it should have been an 80 20 ball right it should have been all him more than the 80 20 ball it wasn't because k didn't put the you know didn't throw it in the right spot but he, he's, he can still win that right uh the exception there antonio williams was awesome he's the only guy who gets a lot of separation uh so kudos to him getting him healthy is a big upgrade but obviously <clears throat> you know you get him healthy you lose bo collins who i wasn't a huge fan of but you know you you're, you're just replacing Bo with Antonio, which is an upgrade, but that's it. Um, getting Cole Turner back was nice, but not not a real difference maker. So I thought I thought the freshman Bryant Wesco and TJ Moore were going to be big impact guys right away, uh, and we didn't see a ton of them. So uh, more on them in a second. Um, other things we learned in week one, uh, aside from that, with Miami, really, really good. Clemson avoids them. Florida State, Virginia Tech. Supposed to be the two toughest games on the ACC slate for Clemson, both road trips. Um, I had a video predicting Clemson's season. And in addition to the Georgia loss, I picked Clemson to go to Blacksburg and lose. And uh, Will Harper, who was on the show with me, he picked Clemson to go to Tallahassee and lose. So I think we're both kind of thinking we could take that back right now. Neither of those teams look so good. NC State, one of the tougher home games, uh, one of the tougher teams that comes to Clemson. They looked okay. Well, they looked bad. Uh, I still think they're probably okay. Um, but they struggled with Western Carolina. They've got Tennessee. It was probably a loss. So that, you know, a lot less hype there. Louisville might be the toughest, really the toughest game left on the schedule regular season for Clemson. So bad loss. But this is all set up for kind of talking about what I want to see from uh, for this App State game. The upside is still very much on the table that Clemson could, could go undefeated in the ACC reach the ACC championship. I don't know. Maybe they improve enough to beat Miami um, by then. That that might be the toughest part of that. But absolutely, they could run the table here and get to an ACC championship 
uh, and battle Miami. Um, now, does that mean that even if they win, they they get a bye and they end up getting blown out in the round of eight by like Penn State or Texas? Probably. But if Clemson can win the ACC, make the playoff, and it ends with a big thud that makes Dabo rethink some things, just like he's been doing every offseason where he fires a couple guys that, frankly, the fans have said probably should have been changed two years prior. I mean, maybe that's what has to happen. Uh, but I'm, I'm optimistic enough, at least about the remainder 11 games of this regular season. Clemson absolutely could win them all. Probably will be favored in all of them. Uh, so you really want to get some optimism out of this app state matchup. So here's what specifically I'm looking for uh, in that game. First of all, Clemson's defense was awesome against Georgia. I think it was just fatigue and sort of uh, mental fatigue too, right? It seemed clear Clemson's offense isn't going to score. You kind of just break the will of the Clemson defense. I think that's the case, but let's see it, right? Uh, App State's a solid offense. Let's dominate, right? Let's hold them to 10 or fewer points. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. Uh, the Cade, Cade Klubnik deep ball, right? I mentioned that he underthrew a lot of them. Didn't look so good there. Okay, well, you should have guys a little bit more open against an App State defense. Is certainly not Georgia's defense. They were a middle of the pack Sunbelt defense last year. I don't know how much they've improved since then, but they're certainly not Georgia. There's going to be some open deep balls. Let's see if Cade can hit guys in stride, right? If he can't, this offense will be at least limited somewhat by that. Let's let's get some optimism there. I think the number one thing I want to see is a wide receiver step up. In particular, I want to see that rotation updated. It is really vexing to me that we thought we were getting an upgrade with Bryant Wesco and TJ Moore. That's the only reason I think you can explain not going into the portal to improve a bad wide receiver group that loses Bo Collins. Um, Bo Collins, by the way, looked pretty good for Notre Dame in week one in their win. Um, so you lose him. The group's already not that good. You've got room. You've got a scholarship, at least one. You don't try to get a wide receiver. It's not like they tried and didn't get one. To me, that says you believe in these freshmen are going to make an instant impact. And I'm totally fine with that, but you got to play them, right? So we, we know what we got if we don't play them. We know it's not good enough. Let's give them a shot. So I want to see a lot of West going more. Hopefully they could show that they could really elevate this offense. Um, a few final thoughts before I get to them. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, getting really close to a thousand views or a thousand subscribers. So appreciate everyone who can subscribe. Uh, final things to think about. Uh, Joey Aguilar is their quarterback, really strong quarterback for App State. So really should be a good test for this Clemson defense. He threw for 326 yards and two touchdowns last week. It was, it was East Tennessee State. So I don't know how much stock you put into that, but nonetheless, he had 3,757 yards last year, 33 to 10. He did an interception ratio last year. So we know he's pretty good. Um, they're going to run a lot of uh, like RPO type stuff. So let's see if, if this Clemson offense can be dominant. Let's, let's kind of confirm that the poor second half against Georgia was just mental and physical fatigue because Georgia has so much depth. Clemson doesn't have as much depth that, there should not be depth problems against App State. Let's let's see them be dominant. And then, like I said, <clears throat> App State's defense is okay. It was middle of the pack, some belt. You know, App State has a great reputation, um, and they certainly deserve that. They were not some team that was in the running for a major bowl last year. Um, they just they just weren't, and that's not a disrespect to them. Uh, I'm going to pull up their schedule here. And of course, teams change every year. They went nine and five. Solid. They lost five games. They lost at North Carolina in, in overtime, which is not the worst loss. But they also lost at Wyoming. They lost uh, at home to Coastal Carolina. They lost at Old Dominion. Uh, and they lost the Sun Belt Championship at, well, yeah, at Troy. So, like, I'm not saying those are embarrassing losses, but if you're losing to Troy uh, by 26, Clemson should should roll. So really no excuse for this to be a close one. I don't want to hear people say, oh, well, App State, you know, they're really good. Sure. They're perfectly respectable Sunbelt team, no shade. But if Clemson is not even a national championship contender, but like a, a team that considers themselves con considers themselves worthy of the playoff, not just because they win a bad conference, this is a blowout, right? 17 point spread. I, I think Clemson should cover that. I think that spread's not that big. I think they will cover that. So I'm optimistic still for both the season, at least the remainder of the regular season and this game. Let's see it. Let's see Clemson go out there and just be dominant. I think that's not in any way a stretch. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, go Tigers. If you enjoyed this video, please help this channel by liking the video, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Also, 
If you're a pet owner and you live in the upstate, check out our sponsor, Ready Vets. They offer immediate walk and care when your pet can't wait. They're open seven days a week till 10 p.m. They're owned by two Clemson grads. They're located in Taylor's just 10 miles from the Woodruff Road Shopping District. 